guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I am going to be talking about fantasy subgenres and settings. So I get quite a few questions about fantasy and subgenres, different types of fantasy, things like high fantasy, epic fantasy, grimdark, all of that good stuff. So I am going to be making a little bit of a series, it's probably only going to be like a mini series on a few different types of fantasy, different fantasy subgenres. So I'm going to be splitting it down kind of into theme. So I have at least two videos planned on this topic. The first one is going to be concerning fantasy settings. Now everything is is a subgenre, but the way that I personally see subgenres, especially in fantasy, is that you kind of have two different types. There are more than two, but there are two prominent ones. The first one is the fantasy setting. So if I say that a fantasy is a high fantasy, I am referring to the setting there. Whereas if I say something is a grimdark fantasy, I'm referring to the plot and the themes of the book. Now with this, it is important to remember that fantasy genres, genres are quite elastic. There are a few fantasy terms that cover pretty much the exact same genres and a fantasy book is often multiple different types of fantasy, not just the one. But I am going to be explaining that as I go through the different types. We have six different setting subgenres to cover in this video and I'm also going to be talking about which ones I use and what specific cases I use this type for. It sounds complicated but as we get into like a certain section of this video. There are like three different subgenres that all commonly cover the same thing. So I will be referring to how I use them, like what I personally class as these individual genres. So we're going to get straight into it with the most common one that I read, which is high fantasy. High fantasy is often used interchangeably with epic fantasy. However, I do class them to be two separate things, but I will say that a lot of the time they do go hand in hand. So I personally consider a high fantasy to be about the setting and epic fantasy to be about the plot. So you can have a high fantasy that isn't an epic fantasy and you can have an epic fantasy that isn't a high fantasy. So when we talk about high fantasies, these are books that are set in completely made up worlds. So they could be roughly inspired by the real world, they could have real world influences in terms of like folklore, mythology, specific historical time periods, but the world is made up. It is not on the planet that we live in, the places referenced aren't places that we live in, like real countries in the world. With high fantasy there are typical types of plot that do lean into the epic subgenre and they tend to be things like your sword and sorcery novels, dragons, high fantasies often have maps at the front of the book because it is a fantastical land and they do often include things like assassins, royalty, intense complex political systems and you will probably notice that the majority of the fantasy that I've heard read is high fantasy. I do prefer it to be completely fantastical, really immersive, really in depth and I do also lean towards epic. So like epic high fantasy is my favourite fantasy subgenres. Now it is also worth noting that high fantasy can be incredibly similar to medieval fantasy and medieval fantasy also leads into Arthurian style of fantasy. So what we're talking about with medieval fantasy is a book that is set in a medieval time period or one that seems to be medieval. So once again, you're getting like your swords and sorcery. They are like ambiguously medieval and it is your typical like horse and carriage, like stone castles kind of setting. With your Arthurian fantasy, it tends to pick up on tropes, themes and characters that are specific to the legend of Arthur. So you have your Merlin type character. I would say like Gandalf is a Merlin type character. You also have like your magic swords. More Morgan Le Fay is a character type that is seen throughout many types of fantasy and has been retold and adapted into like a specific character archetype as well. But for your examples of like high fantasy and medieval fantasy, we have Assassin's Apprentice or the Realm of the Elderling series by Robin Hobb. This first book starts off with a young boy who has been abandoned at the royal keep and his father is the prince in waiting. However, when his father realizes that his bastard son has now come to stay with him, he abdicates his throne 
and he leaves meaning that nobody really knows what to do with our main character fit so eventually when he gets a little bit older the king approaches him and suggests that he train to become the royal assassin this one is high fantasy it is also medieval fantasy as well a little bit because it does have those like ambiguously medieval setting vibes also on the medieval front we have of course the song of ice and fire series by george rr R. martin this one is of course like i'm not even gonna bother <laughs> to explain game of thrones to you guys because it is so popular and so well known but this has all of those typical fantasy themes like we have knights in here there are dragons very complex political magical system there's different branches of magic there's like nature magic and kind of like blood magic in here as well as well as an ominous magical presence and we also have a lot of just like political maneuverings in here like the beginning of this series has very little to do with magic and is definitely Definitely more geared towards political fantasy and people arguing about who's going to be the king which is essentially the whole plot of this series. This one is also inspired by history there's a lot of British history in here like the War of the Roses is a big theme in this one but it is solidly high fantasy with just like inspirations from history. Something a little bit lighter Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mihurin. This one is a fantasy romance and it has an ambiguously medieval French setting following a thief called Louise LeBlanc who is actually a witch and has run away from her coven and she is forced into marriage with Reed who is a witch hunter for this like religious witch hunting militia kind of deal. But while high fantasy does tend to be medieval that is not always the case as with the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. Now this doesn't have have a great deal in terms of technology but I wouldn't say that it is a medieval setting. This one is very firmly in terms of high fantasy in that while there are real world inspirations in here this is a purely fantastical world with a purely fantastical magic system while there isn't a whole lot of technology or anything modern in here the way that they dress is more modern than you would typically see in medieval fantasy. It reminds me of kind of like the 1920s kind of working class attire that they were in this. It is really hard to place but it's definitely more modern feeling than I expected going into this. If you want your more medieval style from Sanderson then I would say that Elantris fits more into that whereas this is just your standard fantastical world and the plot of this one is that we are following a man called Kelsia who is a mistborn which means that he can harness the power of metals when ingested and he is putting together essentially a heist. It's a group of talented allomancers from the underclass of this society to overthrow the final empire and the dark lord who has been in power for a thousand years. I feel like the natural leading point from medieval and high fantasy would be historical fantasy. Now a lot of high fantasy has implied historical connotations like an implied medieval or historical setting and as I mentioned with the A Song of Ice and Fire series there are definitely historical influences in there. However historical fantasy is a fantasy that can be tied to a specific event or time period in history. So often it will be something like an alternate history where we will be retelling this historical event but with the addition of some element of fantasy whether that be like magical creatures, paranormal creatures, supernatural race or like just plain old magic. So one of my favourite historical fantasies, actually one of the only ones that I've read because I don't love historical as a genre on its own, is the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. This one is set in the 1400s in Russia and we are following a young girl who can speak to the spirits of the forest and this is at a time when Christianity is taking over the land so the people of the world are turning away from the old spirits and the old gods and towards Christianity but the old spirits actually perform a crucial task and that is holding back all the evil spirits of the world. So as people are turning towards Christianity, the old gods and spirits are no longer getting the tributes that they usually would and they are waning in strength and unable to hold back these evil spirits. Now this is a series that is steeped in Russian folklore and in this first book we have a very slow coming of age story that focuses on the magic and the folklore of the world and the second book takes this story to the city of Moscow which is heavily focused on politics, specifically 
the ongoing battles between Russia and the Mongolian Empire and one of the central characters in this series is Ivan the Great. One that I know is historical fantasy but I have not yet read is the Temera series by Naomi Novik and literally all I know about this is that it is the Napoleonic Wars but with dragons. Your kind of in between fantasy I guess would be portal fantasy. Now this is one that we know and love from children's tales, things like the Chronicles of Narnia is a solid portal fantasy but this is a story that is told in the mundane real world so just like normal society at whatever time period and contains a portal to a fantasy world so the portal could be a door the back of a wardrobe like in Narnia it could also be like a magical item that transports you to a place but pretty much the key identifier of this type of fantasy is literally just having a human mortal realm and a magical realm and characters move in between the two. So one of the most popular instances of portal fantasy at the moment is the Wayward Children series by Sean and Maguire, the first book being Every Heart a Doorway. Interestingly though, I would not classify the first book in this series as a portal fantasy, but this series is essentially about children who are in Eleanor West's home for wayward children and they have been sent there by their parents because they went missing for a while and when they returned they were telling people that they'd been to a fantastical world, another dimension. Their parents didn't believe them and thought that it was something to do with the trauma that they'd suffered and so they end up at this home for wayward children where they can all start to heal. A lot of them are still looking for their doors trying to get back to their portal world and some of them are glad to be back in the normal world. Now the first book is about Eleanor West's home for wayward children, doesn't really include any portals but this is like a series of novellas and the rest of the novellas, I think all of them, at least in part take place in one of these portal worlds worlds that the children of Eleanor West's Home for Wayward Children have visited at some point. One that I really enjoy as well is the Bargainer series by Laura Thalassa. This is book two because I've lent book one out to a friend but book one is Rhapsodic and this one is a fairy romance story that takes place in the real world although it is more of like a low fantasy contemporary fantasy real world with a couple of like fantastical creatures but a lot of this series does take place in the fairy world which is a completely fantastical realm. Now moving on to the ones that are all like kind of mushed together and that is low fantasy, contemporary fantasy and urban fantasy and then this is where I'm kind of gonna let you guys know which term I tend to use for each one because essentially these are three identifiers of subgenres that are kind of the same thing or are often used interchangeably. So starting off with low fantasy, that is like the direct opposite of high fantasy. Low fantasy takes place in the real world with fantastical elements. Your main identifiers of low fantasy, I guess, would be like set in a setting that you're aware of. So I don't know, the city of New York, but you may have vampires or there may be gods who have come down to rule. You might have a secret society of like people who fight back against the forces of darkness. There is also like interference from real world institutions like the police or the government. But one of the most common examples of low fantasy I could think of was the Shadowhunter Chronicles by Cassandra Clare which I don't even know how many books are in this now. Is it like approaching 15 core installments plus novellas but this is a young adult low fantasy series that takes place in modern day cities but there are institutions of shadow hunters who are Nephilim that fight back against demons to keep demons away from the mortal world. We also have downworlders in here which are like vampires, fairies and werewolves but it very much takes place in a real world setting where behind the scenes of everyday life these people are saving the world from evil. Evil. Another great example would be The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. This takes place in a tiny town in upstate New York and it follows a group of teenagers who are the current generation of the founders of this town and the founder's job is to hold back the Grey which is a beast that lives in pretty much like an alternate dimension but every so often the Grey will advance and the beast will emerge and will kill people and it is the founder's job to keep this under control so that The Devouring 
grey does not take over the town. Contemporary fantasy is pretty much the same as low fantasy. Contemporary fantasy just means it is in a real world present day setting. So it's the direct opposite, I want to say, of historical fantasy. Both of these would count as contemporary fantasy. I mean, this was published in 2007, but it is still in a very modern, like familiar society. And I would say that the term that I personally use the most is contemporary fantasy. So if I say a contemporary fantasy, I mean a modern-ish story that is in a real world setting. Similar to both of those, we then have urban fantasy. And there are two kind of definitions for urban fantasy. The way that it is most commonly used is to pretty much describe like paranormal romance, but they are series that tend to take place in a city in relatively modern times. They also tend to have like dark gritty themes or like um, noir themes and mysteries and things like that. And the kind of books that are like typically described as urban fantasy, I would say that The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher is definitely one. This one follows a supernatural detective in Chicago and he picks up all of the cases that the police can't solve because they're of a paranormal nature. And then we also have like Dark Fever by Karen Marie Moaning. This one follows a young woman whose sister was murdered in Ireland. So the main character goes there to investigate and discovers a fairy underworld. However, I typically do not use the term urban fantasy to describe books like this. I'm more likely to use either low fantasy or contemporary fantasy because there is kind of like an alternate definition, I guess, of urban fantasy or kind of the reason why the subgenre was created and that is typically more like a high fantasy that is set in an urban setting. So essentially a fantasy city. So you have this bustling metropolis that may have a lot of technology, pretty much guaranteed to have like at least cars and just your typical modern-ish city environment. But it is completely fantastical and that is the kind of story that I use the term urban fantasy for. Perfect example would be Crescent City or House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. This is set in the city of Lunathian, which is a pretty modern city. They do have like electricity and technology, although it's powered like through a different type of energy. And this is following a young half a woman who is investigating a string of murders and has been assigned a fallen angel to protect her and help her out with this investigation. And I haven't actually read a lot of what I consider to be urban fantasy, but one that I believe is, is Jade City by Fonda Lee, because this takes place on an island. But I believe the core of this series is Jade, which is a very very powerful substance to own. And we are primarily following two warring families who are constantly in territory wars to try and control the majority of the Jade for like money and influence purposes. So those were six fantasy setting subgenres. The follow up to this video is going to be concerning fantasy subgenres like divided by plot. So you can expect to see things like epic fantasy and like grimdark fantasy in that video. Please let me know down in the comments whether you found this video helpful at all. But aside from that, please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. If you head to my description box, you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those, as well as a link to my bookish candle website, the Instagram for that, and a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today, guys. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go where nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no